How does quantum entanglement violate the speed of light? Well, it doesn't, even though observing a particle with a spin up means that its entangled partner even across the universe is now spinned down, no real information has passed between these two observers. They are just, well, observing. Thanks for the question at Nerd Instinct. Now what else do you have for me? The first question basically asks, why are there puddles on the road, but when you get to where they're supposed to be, there's nothing? What you're describing is a mirage. When light travels through the atmosphere, it can meet the air right above a hot road that is less dense or less refractive, and it can be bent upwards towards your eye. If this light ray is from the sky, then a portion of the road can therefore look like a puddle. In fact, these mirages look like puddles because what you are seeing on the ground is a reflection of the sky. Whoa, dude. What's next? I have always wondered, is there any new energy or matter, or is it all just the same recycled from the Big Bang? Well, that is a big one, AJSO3, but yes, all the matter that makes you up could be billions of years old since the birth of our universe at the Big Bang. Matter and energy are recycled as planets form and stars die, and when life progresses, on our planet at least. So yes, mathematically right now, you are probably breathing in an atom or molecule that passed out of Einstein as he sighed after writing E equals MC squared. Of course, the same math also says that your water you're drinking also contains an atom or molecule that passed through the digestive system of a dinosaur. So enjoy that. Hit me again. Last question, if Mjolnir or Thor's hammer really existed, how might science explain its abilities? Now there's a lot of cool science we could discuss here, but let's stick with one of the questions that's one of the most asked. Why can't anyone lift up Thor's hammer? Yeah! My favorite explanation is that though we call them gods, they simply have technology that is far beyond our own and it's still science. In this respect, Thor's hammer is like an iPhone compared to a spear. James Kekalios, author of The Physics of Superheroes, thinks Thor's hammer can emit gravitons, which are the particles that make up gravity, so that if the hammer could recognize Thor through something like nanotechnology, it could rapidly change its mass and become light enough for him to pick it up, but then too heavy for someone like the Hulk to pick it up. And remember, the Hulk can run through an aircraft carrier. Oh yeah, and if the Hulk could get infinitely strong by becoming infinitely mad, then his attempt to pick up Thor's hammer would cause it to become so heavy that it would sink through the earth because of its density, create a black hole, and destroy everything. Why? Because I use! Good news, science enthusiasts. The phrase that you can use to excuse all of your scientific inquiries into all your favorite fandoms is now available as a t-shirt. Go to Nerdist.com and check out the store to get your very own shirt. Why? Because science.